اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لیسن نمبر 311 سورة التکاثر آیا نمبر 1 to 8 سورة التکاثر is a Makki surah and it was revealed after Surah Al-Kawthar it has one rukur, 8 verses 28 words and about 120 huruf in this surah we learn about the race that people are busy in that people are lost in and this race is to acquire more dunya on one hand there are those who are racing in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the path of Allah and that lesson we learned where? in Surah Al-Adiyat Wal-Adiyat Dabha look at these horses they're running endlessly tirelessly constantly no matter how difficult it is at whatever time and on the other hand the majority of the people what is their race about? they're chasing this dunya so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the reality of this race that if you chase the dunya then what do you have in your hand at the end Allah says alhaakumu takathur competition in worldly increase diverts you alhaakum alhaakum lam ha waw lahu and what is lahu amusement such amusement that distracts a person from what is more important such amusement that distracts a person from what is more important for example a person is watching something on the television and what is more important at that time is the remembrance of Allah what is more important at that time is doing something productive something useful to save oneself in the akhirah to have more good deeds that could be put on the scale that could perhaps save a person on that day however that entertainment what does it do? it distracts a person it keeps him occupied and it makes him think that what he's doing is good so he neglects doing that which is more important so ilha alhaakum alha yulhi ilha ilha is the masdar what does ilha mean? to keep someone ghafil to keep someone negligent from something that is more important so alhaakum it has distracted you it has diverted you what has distracted you? What has diverted you? What has preoccupied you? At-takathur The competition for increase The desire for more The competition for more This competition has distracted you from what is more important At-takathur is from the root letters Kaf, Sara, Kasra What does Kasra mean? Abundance, Kathir And Takathur, tafa'ul. What does that show? That there are more than one person that are involved in this action. There is this element of competition. So, takathur is the competition for kathra. The competition for kathra. That when people are competing against each other to have more and more and more. That she has two, I have to have three. Now she has three, I have to have four. They have this now, we have to have this as well. This is what takathur is. That a person is constantly competing against other people, comparing himself to them, and what is he striving to have? More and more. Takathur. So this takathur, Allah says, it has alhaakum, it has distracted you, preoccupied you, diverted you. Diverted you from what? the remembrance of Allah preparation for the akhirah now what is this takathur referring to takathur in what in particular this is takathur desire for increase in anything whether it is wealth or children or anything that a person likes that a person is competing with others for so this desire for more and more and this competition for more and more this is distracting you that constantly you are comparing yourself with other people constantly you are comparing yourself with other people and you're busy busy trying to get more and more and when you have more what do you do? tafakhur takasur also leads to tafakhur what is tafakhur? boasting to one another 
mentioning to other people, I have this now, and I have that now. In Surah Al-Kahf, Ayah 34, what do we learn? Ana aksaru min kamalan wa a'azuna fara. Ana aksaru min kamala. I have more wealth than you. And notice the word takathur as well. That takathur, where it gives a meaning of competition, it also gives a meaning of ishtiraq. That where everyone shares this. It gives meaning of ta'awun, gives meaning of ishtiraq. That everyone shares this quality. So we see that people, they have many differences amongst one another. Many, many differences. But despite their differences in deen, ethnicity, age, race, what is common between all people is the desire for more. You go to any place, you meet any person, anywhere in the world, of any age, working in any field or not working, what is their desire? What's their goal? What do they want? What do they like? More! They can never have enough. So we see that this feeling, this desire is something that has united people despite their differences. This is something that is so common amongst people. وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لشديد. This is something very common amongst all people. So we see that all people love wealth. There is no person who is exempt from this. Each and every person loves wealth. And as we discussed earlier, every person's level of love or the intensity of that love is different. Some have more love, other people have less. And we see that due to this love that people have for wealth, they're always desiring for more. They're always desiring for more. And not just desiring for more, but they're competing against one another as well for more. And this takasur is in everything. For example, with children, in toys. Similarly, in older people, in clothes. Similarly, amongst women, linens, makeup, men, cars. Then status, power, authority, fame, even sometimes knowledge, books. So, people are always competing. This list is endless. The Prophet ﷺ said, if the son of Adam had a valley of gold, he would desire another like it. He would want one more like it. So, الْحَاكُمُ takathur. This takathur has distracted you from your purpose in life. You are so preoccupied with wanting more. You are so concerned and worried about increase that you forget what is more important. This is your worry. This is your concern. This is your striving. Whereas in reality, your striving, your concern, your worry should be for what? The Akhirah. And we see that this takasur is in everything and sometimes it's also in knowledge. That that person has this degree, so I should also get it. This person has that qualification, they have read this book, I should also read it. However, takasur is only good in what? That which benefits a person in the Akhirah. So even when it comes to knowledge, with regards to which knowledge it's okay, it's permissible. Knowledge that is beneficial Whether it's of dunya or deen Because sometimes religious knowledge even What is it? It's like a burden on a person Remember the example of the Yahud? What is it? كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُ asfara. Because the donkey does not benefit from the books that he is carrying So the only takasur that is good Is what? That which benefits a person in the akhirah However, there are very, very few people, very few people, whose concern is the castle for Akhirah. That they want more for their Akhirah. Generally, what do people want more of? This dunya. They will never say, oh, this person has performed Umrah, so I should also do it. This person is praying, so I should also pray. This person has memorized this much of the Qur'an, I should also do it. And if people do have this desire, many times it's for what purpose? Showing off. Or just to say that yes, even I am good. So very few people are like this, that they do takasur for akhirah. And over here, the takasur that is meant is that which is blameworthy, which is for dunya. So al-hakumu takasur. This takasur has distracted you. It has made you neglect what is more important hatta zurtum al maqabir until you visit the graveyards hatta what does it mean by hatta meaning this takasur continues 
It continues throughout your life until Zurtum al Maqabir until you visit the graveyards. Maqabir is a plural of Maqbara or Maqbar. And what is Maqbara? A place where a person is buried. Burying place, graveyard. So Hatta Zurtum al Maqabir and Zurtum is from Ziyara. What does Ziyara mean? To visit someone. So your takasur will continue until you visit the graves. Meaning until you die and you are buried in your graves. You are running around in the dunya in this competition until death approaches you and you leave everything behind. Hatta zurtum al maqabir. And all that you have accumulated is not coming with you. It's not going to accompany you. Hatta zurtum al maqabir. And notice the word ziyara. Ziyara is to visit. When you go to visit a place, visit someone, are you there permanently? No. What does it mean? You have to move on from there. You have to go back. Or you have to go to another place, another destination. So, hatta zurtum al maqabir, what does it show? That the grave is not the destination. It's not the destination. It's just a temporary place of stay. And then after that, what's the final destination? It's either Jannah or Naar. So, Hatta Zurtum al Because sometimes people, you know, when a person dies, they say things that they have reached their final home. Or statements like that, final home, people use for the grave. This is incorrect. Because the grave is not the final home. After this grave is the hereafter. Which is why we see that there was an Arabi. A Bedouin, when he heard Hatta Zurtum al Maqabir, he said, Wallahi, Mazzair bi Muqim, Wallahi lanuba'athanna. That by Allah, the Zair, the visitor, he does not stay permanently. So by Allah, we are definitely going to be resurrected. Hatta Zurtum al Maqabir. The Prophet said, The servant says, My wealth, my wealth. The Kasr, this is mine, this is mine. I want more, I want more. He's so proud of what he has. He's showing off to other people because the kathur leads to the fakhur as well. So he says, my wealth, my wealth. Yet he only gets three benefits from his wealth. That which he eats and finishes. What is his wealth in reality? Something that he has consumed and has run out in his life. That which he eats and finishes. That which he wears until it is worn out. So for example, he wears certain clothes until they're worn out and they're useless for other people. Or that which he gives in charity and it is spent. That which he gives in charity, he gives it away. And everything else other than that, everything else other than that, other than what? What he has consumed in his life, what he has finished in his life, or what he has deposited for the hereafter. Everything else besides that will go away. Meaning, eventually it will go to who? His heirs. It will not remain his. So Alhaqumut Takathur, you're so busy accumulating, you're so busy wanting more and more, but eventually what's going to happen to it? It's not going to remain with you. You're going to leave it behind for other people. The Prophet ﷺ also said, three things follow the deceased person, and two of them return while one remains behind with him. The things which follow him are his family, his wealth and his deeds. His family and his wealth return, and his deeds, they remain with him. So, الحاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا No, meaning stop. Stop this rat race. Stop this takathur. Because when a person is busy in takathur, then what does he think? That what he's doing is so important. He's so lost in it that he forgets what is more important. So, كلا, stop all of this. Stop chasing the dunya because this dunya is not going to stay with you. This takathur is not going to aid you. Sawfa ta'lamun. Soon you are going to know. Stop all of this takathur. Do not run after this dunya. Why? Because this is not right. It is not correct. And if you do not take heed, if you do not take a lesson, then sawfa ta'lamun. Very soon you will know. What will you know? The consequences of this takathur. If you don't understand this reality in life and don't shift your focus from dunya to akhirah,
from accumulating worldly things to accumulating hasanat. If you don't shift your focus, if you don't shift your purpose, then what's going to happen? Very soon, you're going to come to know the consequences of your chasing the dunya. So, فَتَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ Then again, kalla. No, meaning stop. So, فَتَعْلَمُونَ Soon you are going to know. This is repeated again. Why? As warning. Because many times people don't stop when they're told stop all of this chase. They don't stop. So Allah says, ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ You don't get it once, I tell you twice. كَلَّا سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ كَلَّا Stop. لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ If only you could know. عِلْمَ الْيَقِينَ With knowledge of certainty. لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ What does لَوْ mean? حَفْرْ التَّمَنِّي It expresses wish, desire. So, if only you could know with knowledge of certainty. If only you knew with certainty. You knew what with certainty? You knew the reality of this takasal. The reality of this mutual rivalry. The reality of al hakumut takasal. If only you knew with certainty its consequences, then what? The jawab is not mentioned, but it's implied. And what is that? That you would not run after this dunya then. You would not be overly concerned with this dunya then. لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عِلْمَ الْيَقِينَ The conclusion is not mentioned here. It's kept silent. Why? For emphasis and also for more effect. So if only you knew with knowledge of certainty, you would not run after this dunya. We learn in the Quran, Allah says, لَا تُلْهِكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ and whoever does that, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ They're losers. They're those who suffer. So if only you knew with certainty, if only you had yaqeen in the hereafter, you would not run after this dunya. What are you running after? Allah says, لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمُ You will certainly, definitely, by Allah, definitely you will see the hellfire. This lamb, don't misunderstand this as connected with the previous ayah, that this is the jawab of the previous ayah. لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عِلْمَ الْيَقِينَ لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمُ No, this is not connected with the previous ayah. This lamb over here shows a qasm, an oath. That by Allah, you will definitely, definitely see the jahim. What does it mean by this? That on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, you will definitely see the hellfire. In Surah Al-Kahf, Ayah 53, وَرَأَى الْمُجْرِمُونَ النَّارِ The criminals will see the hellfire. We learn from the hadith that hellfire will be brought on the day of judgment. How? In 70,000 rains, on each rain, 70,000 angels, it will be brought. وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِلْغَاوِينَ So لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمُ You will definitely, by Allah, you will definitely see the hellfire. ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّهَا Then you will definitely see it. How? عَيْنَ yaqeen With the eye of certainty. What does it mean by عَيْنَ yaqeen? عَيْن is eye. And with the eye, you see. And yaqeen is certainty. عَيْنَ yaqeen Such certainty, such conviction that a person has on seeing something. There are different levels of conviction. There are different levels of faith, of belief. One is that you believe in something simply because you have been told about it. Another is that you believe in something because you have seen it. For example, if somebody tells you that this person is not sincere, they cheat. Somebody has told you, okay, you believe them. However, you're not as certain. But if you see them cheating yourself with your own eyes, then will that strengthen your certainty? Yes. So over here, ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّهَا عَيْنَ الْيَقِينَ Right now, you have been informed about the hellfire. And on that day, you will see the hellfire. And you will see it and you will not doubt it. You will not doubt it. عَيْنَ الْيَقِينَ And لَتَرَوُنَّ This is plural. And alha kum kum is referring to all people. So what does it mean? That everyone is going to be made to see the hellfire. Both the believers and disbelievers. Both the people who will end up in hellfire and the people who will end up in Jannah. Everyone will be made to see hellfire. وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا 
وَهَارِدُهَا Each person will cross the hellfire at least, if not go into it. But the believer will only see a glimpse of it and the disbeliever will see it as his outcome, as his final home. ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّهَا عَيْنَ الْيَقِينَ ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Then you will surely be asked that day about an naim about the pleasures. On that day you will be questioned about what? An naim What does naim mean? Blessings, pleasures that you have enjoyed in this world. Allah will ask you about them. That what did you do with them? How did you use them? Did you benefit from them? Did you waste them? Were you grateful for them? Or were you arrogant about them? Did you just get lost in these blessings? Or did you worry about your akhirah as well? ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ And this question, you, this is general, everyone will be asked, the believers as well as the disbelievers. Everyone will be asked about the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. And what's the evidence for that? A report in Sahih Muslim in which we learn that once the Prophet sallallahu he came out of his house. Why? Out of hunger. He was extremely hungry. So he came out of his house and he met Abu Bakr and Umar. And when he met them, he asked them that what brought you out of your house? They said hunger. We were hungry as well, so we came out. And the Prophet ﷺ said that, By Allah, nothing drove me out of my house except for hunger as well. So he said, Come along with me. So all of them, the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr ﷺ, Umar ﷺ, all of them went. And the Prophet ﷺ took them to the house of an Ansari, Sahabi. And when they went there, he wasn't home, but his wife was there. And when she saw him, she welcomed him. And... The Prophet asked her that where is so and so, meaning where is your husband? And she said that he's just gone out in order to get some water. So when he came and he saw that the Prophet ﷺ was there and Abu Bakr was there and Umar was there, immediately he went and he brought a branch, almost like a branch of a date palm on which were dates, so fresh dates. So he brought all of them. Just imagine, he didn't just bring a few dates, but he cut off that entire piece and he brought it to the Prophet ﷺ, when he said eat. So the Prophet asked him that why did you bring the whole thing? So he said for you to choose from. And then we learned that the Sahabi, he went and he slaughtered an animal and he brought its meat and his wife cooked some bread and all of this food was presented to the Prophet ﷺ and him and Abu Bakr and Umar they ate of the fresh dates, they ate of that fresh meat and that freshly cooked bread and along with that that sahabi also brought cool water cool water what do you think about these things normal isn't it a cool drink some meat bread I mean we wonder where's the salad huh? or where's the vegetable portion or something like that so all of these blessings when they were placed before them the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ عَنْ هَذَا النَّعِيمِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ By the one in whose hand is my soul, you will be questioned about these blessings on the Day of Judgment. You will be questioned about these blessings on the Day of Judgment. لَتُسْأَلُنَّ عَنْ هَذَا النَّعِيمِ That أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِنْ بُيُوتِكُمُ الْجُوعِ ثُمَّ لَمْ تَرْجِعُوا حَتَّى أَصَابَكُمْ هَذَا النَّعِيمِ that what brought you out of your homes was hunger. And now you don't go back home until after you have enjoyed all of his blessings. In another version we learn that the Prophet ﷺ said, these are the blessings for which you will be questioned about. Cool shade, because they were sitting under the cool shade. Fresh dates and cool water. Cool water, cool shade, fresh food. This is what you will be questioned about on the Day of Judgment. ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ But it's unfortunate that we have these blessings all the time. All the time. That if it's extremely cold outside, we're sitting in a warm place. And yet, yet we complain. It's so cold or it's so hot. Yet we complain. Whereas all that we have to do is just put a sweater on or take it off or do something 
But why is it that we start complaining immediately? Imagine if this blessing was not given to us, a blessing of eating. Could you sit outside in this cold? Could you? You couldn't. Latus alunna yawma idin anin naim. These blessings you'll be questioned about. Food. If it's not the right taste, if it's not the right type, we say we don't like it. We say we don't want to have it. Just because it doesn't satisfy our taste buds, we start complaining. And we start looking down on the food. And we start belittling. ثُمَّ لَتُسْ أَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ These are huge blessings. But unfortunately we take all of them for granted. Ibn Mas'ud anhu said that these blessings, it refers to aman. It refers to peace, security, siha, health. Abu Hurairah anhu, cool water. Other companions said that it refers to bread, fresh bread, or water that is sweet, water that is easy to drink, sweet to drink, in the sense that when you drink it, it's not extremely salty. It's not such that it bothers you. No. You can drink it. It's easy for you to drink. All of the delicious things that we eat and we drink. Similarly, it has been said that Naim refers to health. Health. This is also a huge blessing. The fact that our bodies are sound, the fact that our hearing is sound, our vision is sound, the fact that we are safe. So what if we have a headache once in a while? So what if something small happens and we're hurting in one place? Aren't there too many other blessings that Allah has given? Similarly, it has been said that it refers to faragh, free time. This is also a huge blessing. But unfortunately, we waste that free time. Complaining that we have nothing to do. Complaining that we are bored. Or complaining that we have too much to do. Similarly, it has been said that na'im refers to time. It refers to morning and evening. This is also a huge blessing. But in the morning... We're waiting for the evening. In the evening, we're waiting for the morning. And we don't make use of our time. Then some have said that this na'im refers to guidance and knowledge. Knowledge is also a huge blessing. So if you summarize, a na'im refers to what? Everything from the pleasures, the comforts, the leisure, the enjoyments of this dunya. Everything that a person enjoys. But unfortunately, we're so unhappy and discontent with all of these blessings that Allah has given to us, that no matter how much we have, we want takasur. We want more. And this takasur has distracted us from being grateful. This takasur has distracted us from using our blessings properly. This takasur has distracted us from preparing for the akhirah. We're so concerned about what we don't have. We're so concerned about how things are not the way we want them to be. That we don't have a higher purpose in life. Recitation. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhaqum al-Takathur. Hatta zurtum al-Maqabir. Kalla sawfa ta'lamun. Thum. كَلَّا سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ كَلَّا لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عِلْمَ الْيَقِينِ لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّهَا عَيْنَ الْيَقِينِ ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُونَ Everything we have, everything we enjoy, is in fact a blessing. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ Allah. Anything you have, it is from Allah. And Allah will ask you about it. How did you get it? What did you do with it? Did you use it properly? Did you waste it? Did you neglect it? Did you just throw it away? Did you share it? What did you do with it? ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ You will be questioned about it. 
Earlier we learned in Surah Al-Adiyat about the horses. That how, if the horses are well fed, they're well kept, how obedient they become to their masters. How fast they run. So fast. And they're not afraid. And they charge and they attack at the instruction of the masters. So this shows gratitude on the part of the horse. That whatever blessing, whatever favor the master has shown to the horse, it's being demonstrated in the form of obedience. Now think about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us many, many more blessings compared to what a master can give to his horse. Many, many more blessings. Food, shelter, clothing, people, enjoyment, happiness, taladdul a'yun. Just looking at something and being happy with that. Knowledge, religion. أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنِ وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ أَلْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي Religion is also a huge blessing. But what is the level of our obedience, our submission, our effort, our striving compared to the striving of a horse for its master? We are so lost that we're just lost in this dunya. أَلْهَاكُمُ التَّكَاتُمْ That we can't even worry about a greater purpose. And that too seems to be such a great burden on us. Salah is such a huge burden. Reciting the Qur'an is such a huge burden. Gaining knowledge feels like such a huge burden. It's because perhaps we think that we deserve all of these blessings. It's our right. And we can do whatever we want. Allah has given these blessings not so that we become arrogant, but so that we become humble. Like Sulaiman alayhi salam. What dua did he make? Rabbi awzi'ni and ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayhi. Oh Allah, give me the ability that I'm grateful for the blessing that you've given me wa'ala walidayya and that you've bestowed on my parents. Wa'an a'mala salihan tarda. This is what shukr is. That for all of these blessings that you've given me, I'm able to do deeds that are righteous that you will be happy with. Wa'adkhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika salihin. His focus was the akhirah. Not dunya. But the more love a person has for this dunya, the more it becomes his focus, his worry, his concern. Then it distracts him. It makes him ungrateful. It makes him disobedient. It makes him negligent. We listen to the recitation again. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألون Subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.